Good morning. Good morning. Before we begin our liturgy and our welcoming to our visitors, I'd like for us to take a moment of silence in uh, response to our ambassador in Libya who was killed and Marines who were killed and all the others that were killed in the atrocities that took place this past week throughout the world against our embassies and, and our loved ones who have gone. Amen. Welcome to St. Raphael's by the Sea Anglican Church. If this is your first time with us, if you'd be so kind as just to raise your hand so our, visit, so our ushers can make sure you get one of our cards to fill out. So if y'all would be so kind to do that, thank you for coming and joining us today. And uh, that way, if you fill out your card, <laughs> we can know a little more about you and, and we can get you on our email list if you so choose and you can get to know more about us. So thank you for doing that. Welcome. I'd also like to welcome all of you. If this is uh, all of our viewers online, for those of you who don't know, we are on the internet live. So if we have any new viewers this week, we'd like to give you a special welcome also. And uh, please let us know through email if, um, if there's any prayer concerns that we can lift up in prayer for you. Please do um, send us a message so we can find out what we can do to help you. Also, for those of you who are here, I'd like to remind you, we do have prayer cards back in the back by the front door, and uh, you are welcome to uh, grab one of those and fill it out and give it to one of the ushers, and they will be more than happy to get it to our intercessory group. So, thank you for coming, and do we have any uh, birthdays or anniversaries? Okay, we want to keep the Keelers in prayer. It's their anniversary, and so please keep them in your prayers. We also, I'd like to um, thank all of you who have been praying for the Markram kitty cat, who's only two and a half years old, Tebow. We, um, he did not uh, recover as we hoped, and we, uh, he left us yesterday, so <laughs> this is a tough week, but thank you for your prayers. I would like to invite all of you to our movie night. This is our last summer movie night. It'll be this Thursday. And it is going to be at the Historical Cottage at Miss Roxy's house. Would you like to tell people where that is? It's at 385B Estero Boulevard, which is on the bay side at the northern tip of the island. It's a big, big house on stilts. So please, <coughs> please come and join us. Have any of y'all um, heard about the movie The End of the Spear? Have you heard that about it? It's a, did, you, did you hear good things about it, I hope? Oh, I've seen it too. oh, you've seen it too. Well, good. Please come and join us again <laughs> and watch it. It can't be in two places. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's the movie that, and it's on forgiveness, and it involves missionaries and uh, I. Um, Amazon tribe out in the ju out in the jungles that was never reached for Christ until these missionaries got uh, made contact with them. It involves the missionaries' families, and it's a beautiful love story on forgiveness and how much um, uh, people are willing to go for Christ's sake. And if you haven't seen it <laughs> and are available, please don't miss out on our last movie night. Um, do bring a potluck dinner. Uh, we're having a potluck dinner, so bring a dish if you can. Um, if you are coming, uh, we'd like for you just to sign your name there. If you have any idea what dish you'd like to bring, fill that in. If you don't know, put a question mark. That's fine. And we just want to kind of get a general account of how many people are coming so that we can uh, make sure we have enough uh, uh, materials there for everyone. So please do plan to come. It's uh, been a fun time together. I think how many people have actually made at least one? Okay, pretty much everybody that's been here during the summer. So um, did you, was it a good experience? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So you can talk to them afterwards if you're not sure about coming. <laughs> so don't miss this one. It'll be a time of warm fellowship and, a, and also learning time together. 
Um, if there are not any other announcements, are there any other announcements at this time? Then, no, not this week. Okay. Well, then let's please stand and start praising the Lord. be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join with me in saying the Gloria and Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word.
reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. <clears throat> the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let me confront, let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 116 together. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me, the pangs of shame awake me. I suffered distress and anguish, then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the sinful. When I was brought home, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to the rest. For the Lord has done all the way with you. For you have delivered my soul to death. My eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I keep my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I sin in my consternation. Everyone is a liar. What shall I hear from the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your servant name. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you the thanksgiving sacrifice and call in the name of the Lord. I will obey my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the course of the house of the Lord, in the midst of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. second reading is from the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be the heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You will love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. 
for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I by my works will show you my faith. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea at Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. 
But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. And he called to him the multitude with his disciples and said to them, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. As I said earlier, this week has been a tough week. As we know, the American ambassador sent to Libya along with three other personnel were shamelessly murdered by the anti-American Muslims. And the rage of these killers didn't stop there, but it just spread throughout the Middle East. If you all saw the map on the news, it was just awful. And other parts of the world even, reaching even Australia and taking more lives in its wake. Well, what made these events even worse was that they began on 9-11 a somber day of remembrance for the thousands that were killed by radical Muslims 11 years ago. Yet this violence began supposedly as an attack against Americans, and that's, then it spread to include the fort in Afghanistan, where one of the British princes, Prince Harry, has been assigned, plus the British and German embassies in the Sudan, and it was a ridiculous film, some of y'all might have seen on YouTube, that was uh, posted there on the internet, was blamed for this horrible outrage. While the rioters themselves were chanting their oneness with Osama bin Laden, the militant leader that had led the 9-11 attacks of 2001 and killed last year in May, a whole year and a half ago, by an American SEAL team. Well, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, I was taught that two wrongs do not make a right. And I even taught my children that. So whether or not the death of our enemy or an obscure anti-Muslim film caused this debacle, the reaction of the Muslim clergy to react by encouraging violence is not of God. At least not the God that you and I worship. The God we worship sent us his only begotten son to pay the debt of our offenses against God, which we have all done with our sin, and to pay it with the blood of God's own son. Such a God does not encourage violence for violence. In God's eyes, two wrongs do not make a right. And some might say, well, yeah, we'll go back to the Old Testament. You know, an eye and eye, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But yet God states clearly in the Old Testament, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord using the King James Version I was raised on. St. Francis of Assisi's prayer for peace is a comfort for me in times of trouble. Anyone familiar with St. Francis Assisi's prayer for peace? Yeah. Well, for those of you who are familiar with it, the prayer goes like this. I'd like to pray it. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. 
where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. This prayer was most helpful for me this week, especially yesterday, as I said, we had to say goodbye to our two and a half year old cat named Tebow. He was really cool cat. This, uh, if you mind, if I indulge a moment. When he was just a kitten, we brought him home, we already, and we found out that he had feline leukemia, and the vet says, well, what do you want to do? And I, I said, what do you mean? He said, do you want to put him down, or do you want to take him home? I said, well, yeah, we're taking him home. <laughs> he was already part of our family, you see. And the other cat had been given shots to protect him from feline leukemia, so we were okay, and, and uh, he became a part of our family. And he lived up to his name, Tebow. For those of you who are fans of Tebow, Tim Tebow. Tebow the cat was awesome. He would, you could throw him a little yarn ball and he would catch it. I don't know very many cats that catch things, but he was awesome with his front paws and he would catch that, put it in his mouth and run with it. I think he was, thought he was making a goal line or something, you know, a touchdown or whatever. But he would go charging out with it. And then he figured out how to get on one of the counters, next, the counter next to the refrigerator, and jump from there up to the top refrigerator, up to the top where we have a half wall, kind of, you know, three-quarter wall where we keep plants. And that was his jungle. Well, he'd go up there, and he was king of the jungle, and I would throw him one of those little rubber balls. I'd keep a whole basket full of balls, because I'd throw it to him. He'd catch the rubber ball in his paws. And then, I mean, people had to watch it because they didn't believe me. He would actually throw the ball back to me. I mean, it was, and it was really fun when we got the dogs because they would try and catch the ball if I didn't get it. You know, they'd run and get it. And so the whole family was uh, having fun with Tebow. And, and uh, when we did get the puppies, uh, our other cat, the older cat, was very upset that we had brought canine into the house of cats. And so <laughs> it was Tebow who was the peacemaker and got the older cat to welcome the, the puppies. And one of the puppies uh, named Honey Bear, we call her Bear, she actually adopted Tebow as her cat. And we give him a bath every morning, whether he liked it or not. <laughs> and now that Tebow is gone, she's now, now hurting because they're um, corgi doodles and they have that hurting instinct in them. And she's now hurting the older cat, Chuck Norris. I know the names are really <laughs> exciting to you. Uh, they're all good Christians. <laughs> and now hurting Chuck Norris around the house and, and giving him a lick on the face. So God provides and takes care of us and our need. And, and this prayer this week was really helpful for me. And, and I know that the death of a cat does not compare with the death of a human, but for those of us who are animal lovers, we understand that the loss of a loved one is the loss of a loved one, especially in the, these, our pets that God has given to us and become members of our family. And, and the Lord tells us that, um, that when we're saved, we're saved and our household. So I'm expecting to see my kitties when I get to heaven and also my dogs that have passed on. Well, whenever, do, whenever tragedy strikes us, in this world, whether it is large or small, we have a choice. And, and we can respond to our tragedies in life in various ways. We can choose to be filled with anger and hatred and, and follow the path of destruction, or, or we can choose life by allowing the Lord God Almighty to comfort us with His Holy Spirit and fill us with His peace that passes all understanding. And in the end, though, if we choose the path of destruction, the path of destruction leaves us really spiritually empty. While if we choose the path of life, we find ourselves being filled with not just God's peace, but with the love of God. And it is the love of God that will see us through the hardships 
and temptations that life on earth brings. Some of you might not know, but in the Koran, and I learned this at a clergy conference, by um, a Muslim who was converted to Christianity and is now on the hit list by Muslims. And so he was speaking to us knowing his life was at stake. Very bold man. And he told us that there are 99 names for Allah in the Quran. The God, Allah is the God of the Muslims, for those of you who don't know. And of those 99 names, not one, not one of them is love. Or even comes close to compassion. And while the Muslim faith is very structured, it is a religion that does not see God as love. Love for the Muslims is weakness. Their God is strong and powerful and vengeful and, and is out for blood. And this is just the opposite of the God of Israel and the God of those of us who follow the teachings of his son, Jesus the Christ. Now, this was a real eye-opener for me because, you know, in seminary we were taught everybody's worshiping the same God. We just have a different name. You know, they were taught, that's how we were taught, and that Allah was the God of Abraham, Isaac, not of Isaac, but Abraham and Ishmael. And, and yet that is not the God that the Muslims worship. It's a totally different God. And, and we need to know that because the Judeo-Christian God is a God of love, mercy, and forgiveness. That's the God that we worship. And so the Muslim world sees Christians and Jews as weak. Did you understand that? So we're weak because we worship this weak God. And in our humanness, when we're attacked by our enemies, we are tempted to just lash out in anger or, you know, and in response to senseless attacks like that took place this past week. Boom, 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 all over the globe even. Yet the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jesus desires our response to be one of love and not hatred. And if we choose to respond in hatred like our enemies, then how are we different from them? What faith are we showing to them? In the New Testament reading for today from James's letter to the 12 tribes in the dispersion, he writes, so faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Our response, which is our works, lets the world know what our faith is. And if we claim to believe in the God of love, then we are called to walk in love with one another and to pray for and even to do good to our enemies. We're taught pray and bless those who persecute you. Only when we walk in love can we show others the mercy, the love, and the forgiveness of the Lord God Almighty, who is the master of the universe. In the beginning of James's letter, St. James responds to the importance of living a life of faith no matter what the circumstances of this world brings. And at that time of, in the world history, Christians were being slaughtered. There was great persecution against Christians. So he was not just saying this you know, out of the blue. He, he knew what it was like to lose those he loved for the faith. And he writes, My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. 
This is so hard for us to accept as humans. So against our human nature. Vengeance is mine, saith we. <laughs> That's not what he says. So while we grieve the loss of those we love, we are to count it joy that we are now in a better place where there is no violence or pain and suffering. That they who have been killed are now in a better place where there is no violence or pain and suffering. For See, we know that this life is but a temporary life. It's just like a, a, a drop of water in a huge ocean. Our whole span of Earth's history is like that drop of water. I'm not even saying our lives are like a drop of water. We're just so, our lives are so minute in the perspective of what eternity is. And so we are called to put our faith in the one who is eternal. We need to have an eternal perspective, not this temporary one. And yet we are still remaining in our earthly lives. And so we fight against this nature, and yet we've been called to be witnesses of the God of love. Now, I'm not saying we are not to protect ourselves. Yes, we are called to protect ourselves. But protection must be done in such a way that it's not done out of anger and hatred. Do, do you hear what I'm saying? We are to do these things out of love for those we love. And we are to find ways to try and bless our enemies. Muslims at this point in history are actually coming to Jesus Christ. Not through missionary work through dreams where Jesus himself is coming to them in their sleep and saying, I am the Jesus you seek. So there's a spiritual revival already started in the Muslim world. And so that the clerics there are wanting to squash that down too. This is a battle not between Americans and our allies and the Muslim world. This is a spiritual battle. This goes far beyond what we are seeing in the physical. And so we are called to walk in love no matter what happens. For if we allow ourselves to sink into anger and, and hatred, then we are choosing to live a life without hope. Yet the Lord God Almighty has given us hope in Jesus, his son, to help us to overcome the waves of violence or despair that seek to drown us. It is this hope in Christ that bolter, bolsters our faith to carry on no matter what our lot is. No weapon formed against us in this world can prosper because we're not of this world. We that live beyond this world, we walk by faith and not by circumstances. Even though our enemies may kill the body, they cannot kill our souls. Our souls belong to Christ and Jesus, it's his Father, the God of love. We have a faith that teaches us to love one another even as God loves us. Now following Jesus' teachings, Christ taught in the Gospel of Mark, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? That's from the New American Standard Translation. That's closer to the original... <laughs> text that I like to use when we need to hear closer to the original text. Because the one we read today, it said the life. But that's not what the author was talking about. The author was talking about our souls. Are we willing to exchange the world for our souls? Our souls are what goes on. And while Christ's words may be difficult for us, especially when our enemies are raging against us and by all, and, and even choose our day of mourning, to begin this horrible outrage, it is wise to take note as to how important Christ believed his words to be. 
Mark writes, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. See, Jesus knew that we're not living in a perfect world. And that's why he called it an adulterous and sinful generation. And he goes on to say, the son of man being him will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. So he has to be really careful about letting our emotions take us on the wrong course. And that is why I'm asking that today we resolve to not make the Lord ashamed of us. And we choose to walk in his love through faith in God. Please stand and let us state together as what's, what we believe is written in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, especially for Neil, Alice, our priest, and for all priests and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the word of the sacrament. We pray. Pray for Barack, our president, Rick, our governor, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from the service. Give to all the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Roxy, Sue, Tasha, Anthony, Bonnie, Mary Sue, Lorelai, Jean, Grace, Martha, Joanne, Betty, Jane, Harold, Lily, Gary, Jane, Jerry, Linda, Missy, Melissa, Felicita, AJ, Frandy, Iris, Allison, Courtney, Andrew, Anna, Dan, Jan, Nash, Neva, and the Coptic Christians in Egypt. Pray for all those who serve in our military. 
Rockford guy, Adam Stock, FEMA, David Webb, Caroline, Nick Mooney, Jessica Ames, and Ian Claver. Let us pray for the soldiers who have died serving in our military and comfort for their families and loved ones. Pray for all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries with especially Arthur and Mary Alice. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he give you the peace that passes all understanding. 
And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you always. Oh, 
Thank <laughs> you. 